Welcome back. This last video about the Hemi 153 is going to be about its uh, killer app, the Gudermannian function G theta here. Uh, this is what allows the slide rule to add to the mix the hyperbolic functions. Now, other slide rules have the strange Pythagorean scales, uh, P, Q, Q prime, sometimes with uh, Q and Q prime on the base instead of the slide. Um, so other slide rules have those scales which allowed you to do these triangle solutions in the way that I did them. Um, but, as far as I know, the Hemi 153 is the only slide roll with the Gudermannian scale. Somebody could correct me in the, in the comments if they know of another one. Um, okay, so you add one scale to the mix and somehow you are, you're able to compute the hyperbolic functions and the, the real secret is this Gudermannian function which could be defined as the arc sine of tanch of x. Um, so one obvious uh, fact then is that the sine of the Gudermannian function is tanch x. Um, you also get that the cosine of it is uh, the secant and the tangent is a hyperbolic sine. Um, so I'll use these identities then um, down here. So here's the idea. Uh, to compute the cinch, um, and for any of the hyperbolic functions, I use g theta instead of theta or r theta. Okay, so I use the Gudermannian scale. Uh, so let's set that to 0 0.86, which is close to the middle here. Okay, so I set 0 0.86 on the Gudermannian. Now the trick to remembering how it should work is that sine and tangent essentially swap. Okay, uh, so the sine of the Gudermannian is tanch x. Uh, but the tangent of the Gudermannian is cinch x. So on the tangent scale here, I read 0.97, but that's actually cinch x, okay? To read tanch x, I read where I would normally read the sine, and it looks here like 0.696 or so. Uh, remember, I'd normally read the sine on the p scale, uh, so this is 0.696. Of course, then I'd be using theta or r theta instead of the Gudermannian function. Um, okay, so the trick is uh, Kosh and uh, hyperbolic secant are a little bit uh, more complicated. Uh, the idea is that, okay, um, let's make sure I'm still on 8.6. Uh, looking at this identity, where I would normally read cosine, I'm going to read hyperbolic secant. Now remember if you saw my part 2 video, the way to find cosine is to set the angle with the cursor, then um, find the index of the Q scale, and read the results out here, okay? And uh, it could be the other side if you're using the other index. And so here, if you do this uh, using the hyperbolic function, you get the 0.7718 uh, it looks like. Okay, but that will actually be hyperbolic secant. Now to compute uh, cosh, uh, you just need to compute the inverse, or the reciprocal. Uh, so let's just do that with ci. So seven, let's see, seven, uh, one, eight. I'll read result on c there. Looks like about one, three, nine. Okay, now remember that you cannot use the logarithmic with the non-logarithmic scale, so uh, if you're thinking of an operation where you have to do uh, one with the other here, like taking reciprocal of something I got off the non-logarithmic scales, then I need to actually do a, a transfer, uh, which is kind of the, the downside of this slide roll. Uh, things you could do on uh, standard trigonometric or hyperbolic scales without a transfer, um, such as multiply or divide. Um, here on the Hemi 153, you need to um, perform a transfer to do that. Um, okay, but the Hemi 153, overall, ingenious design, right? Uh, we get a log-log slide roll, the three standard log-log scales here. Uh, we get a unique system for solving right triangles uh, for their lengths. We get a unique system of uh, the trigonometric functions, which have kind of an interesting range a different range and different resolution in different areas than uh, the standard slide roll. And with the one extra scale, we get the hyperbolic functions instead of adding an additional, say, three scales that you would normally add on a vector slide roll. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the Hemi 153 in the comments.